doing an angiogram on this gentleman who had an abnormal stress test uh, which showed uh, that one area of his heart was not getting as much blood flow. Uh, of course a stress test is a non-invasive test and it's not the gold standard but we use it as a way to screen patients who may have heart disease and so the next step after a stress test is what we're doing today, a coronary angiogram. Raise him up a little more please. So I'm just going to get arterial access. Have right radial access. Six French glide sheet going so in. We've accessed the artery with a small needle and through the needle we pass a thin wire and that wire is like a rail for our sheath. The sheath is um, like a little plastic pipe that stays in the artery and allows us to pass uh, other catheters through it. These are the catheters we use to image the coronary arteries. They have special shapes that are, that are adapted to um, to get into the artery. So since we have a foreign piece of plastic in the artery, we need to make sure the artery doesn't clot or spasm. So once we get access, we inject some medications that um, prevent spasm and some blood thinners that uh, prevent clot because we are dealing with a tiny little artery. We don't want it to spasm or clot. So that's what we're doing now. Two, two, and three. So the next thing is we will, we will get a long, two, two and three. long wire. Do you have your microphone on? And that, over that wire, we will pass the catheter that's going to engage the coronary artery. So the wire kind of is the pathfinder, and the catheter tracks over the wire. Of course, we do all these procedures using x ray, and uh, we inject a liquid that has iodine in it and that's a special dye with iodine and the iodine we can see under x-ray and so that shows us the inner channel of the artery that we're looking at. So uh, because we use x-ray everyone's covered with lead you can't see it under our gown but we all have lead on and this is a image intensifier and the x-ray comes from underneath and then through the body and is detected by the image intensifier. Yeah, here's the catheter and the, the wire that goes through it. You may be able to see better if I put background here. So it's a thin, lubricious wire with a little bend, angle bend on the tip of it that allows it to find the channel. And we look under x-ray as we're going up. And you'll be able to see on the monitor at some point um, us feeding this wire up. Ready? Okay, so we're just, you can see the wire, our guide wire, and we're tracking it up through the brachial vein, subclavian vein, and we want to get it into the aorta. And now I'm going to track the catheter over, and you can see the wire is in the aorta, and it'll bend when it hits the aortic valve, which is right there. So we know we're at the bottom of the aorta. And then we pass our catheter and then we remove the wire. And then we flush the catheter carefully to make sure there's no air or clot or anything. And that's what Steve's doing here. This catheter also allows us to monitor the patient's pressure. And we see that on the screen along with the heart rhythm and oxygen level. We monitor all these things during the procedure. And Steve is just flushing everything, making sure it's all good. And we are going to now insert the catheter into the artery. Test. So we are in the artery now. And we're going to take pictures at various angulations. And so you'll be able to see on that monitor all the different angles we use. That's the right coronary artery. We're going to Take a picture of that, and that looks clean. It's a large, normal-looking artery. 
So the nice thing about, uh, we used to do these procedures all from the leg, the artery and the groin, um, but we recently started doing it from the radial artery and the wrist. Uh, and it's a little more comfortable for the patient, but sometimes uh, it's a little harder to maneuver the catheter into the artery. So that's a nice picture there. Okay, go back to LAO. Let's try one more time to go to the left coronary artery, if we can. But we may need a catheter that has a different shape because this one doesn't quite exactly fit to him. Test there. Yeah, it's just a little, little bit short. Yeah, and we'll need a exchange, exchange wire. So this catheter isn't fitting into the artery uh, good enough for us to get a nice picture. So we're gonna exchange for a slightly larger catheter. And in order not to lose our place, we're gonna insert a long wire down there just to hold our place and then remove this catheter and then put a new catheter over that wire. So we are putting this long exchange wire down and then we're pulling out our catheter that's too small. And okay. Now we're going to put the new catheter in. So we always wipe everything, make sure there's no blood or clot anywhere where we don't want it. And Steve's going to hold the wire pinned while I feed this new catheter. You'll see it coming down here. And here it comes. So we're hoping that this one is going to fit a little nicer because it's got a bigger curve. So he's, he's kind of a big guy, he has a large aorta, and so that other catheter didn't quite fit the way we needed it to. And Steve's again gonna flush meticulously, getting rid of all the air bubbles. Okay, this one fits perfect. So now we're gonna shoot the left coronary artery. We just got done shooting the right coronary artery. This, this is gonna be the left. And you'll see various angulations. Shooting. And so far I don't see any blockages, which is good news. So sometimes, you know, as I said, the stress test is, is a non-invasive test and it's not always exact. I would say 85% of the time it's correct, but sometimes it's not. And Shooting. In this case, uh, so far I'm not seeing any blockages, which is great news for this patient. Uh, unfortunately, he had to have an angiogram to show it, but um, it, is, it is good news. There is some very mild disease in his left main, but I don't really see anything that's tight. And uh, the reason why he had the stress test in the first place is because he had passed out. And so after he passed out, he underwent a whole lot of tests, including the stress test, which showed a little bit of an abnormality. So you can see we're just taking all different angles because the heart's a three-dimensional structure and you, the picture you're looking at is a two-dimensional picture. So we need to look at it from multiple sides in order to assure ourselves that there's no blockage anywhere. And so far it's looking good. So you see, you see the, the black that looks like a little pipe, right? So when there's a blockage, you'll see a little bite out of that, like an hourglass. And uh, that's where the plaque, cholesterol plaque is blocking the artery. So you don't see a full, healthy, large channel like you do in this gentleman. And so now we're just gonna before we remove the catheter, we're just going to review everything very carefully and make sure we haven't missed anything. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Okay, next. This again is the right coronary artery. We're just reviewing all our images. Okay, next. Next. Very nice. Okay. Next. Okay. 
So you can see in the left main, which is the most proximal trunk, there's a little, little, little mountain inside of there where we're going to say it's a 30% blockage mosaic in the screen. So there's a little 30% blockage in the left main artery, which is not going to be significant in him. It's not severe enough to really fix with an angioplasty, but we will aggressively control his cholesterol and that kind of thing. Okay, next. The other arteries all look fine. So we're just going to remove the catheter. And as I was saying, uh, we used to do all these from the leg, but lately we've started doing it from the wrist. And the benefit is it's more comfortable for the patient and they can walk sooner. And it's a smaller artery, smaller hole, so much less bleeding risk. And uh, what we do now is we are going to remove this sheath. We're going to put a little pressure bandage on it so that it doesn't bleed and then he'll be on his way. And that's a coronary angiogram. So uh, we just finished this um, angiogram on this patient. Um, angiogram is a very routine procedure now, very safe procedure. It's done many, many times across the country and um, you saw it done through the radial approach today. Uh, just to recap, this was a gentleman who had suffered a fainting spell and after that, he underwent some various tests, including some cardiac tests. And one of them was a stress test, which showed a little bit of abnormality in one area of his heart. And that um, usually means that there's a blockage uh, in that area of the heart. But um, the stress test, it's not an exact test. It's a non-invasive test. It's accurate about 85% of the time. And in this case, we saw that the stress test uh, was not accurate and that he, in fact, did not have any tight blockages. We did find one 30% blockage, but that's not enough to cause the symptom of uh, fainting. And so, um, fortunately, he's, he didn't need to have any angioplasty. But if he had needed it, we could have done it at the same time. And um, the fact that we went through his radial artery in his arm means that he can get up sooner, walk sooner. It's a smaller artery. There's a lower risk of bleeding and uh, it's overall more comfortable for him and uh, he'll go home in three to four hours and uh, that's it i hope this was beneficial to you and uh, interesting to you and thank you for watching